tool engineering from gttc me design is uh, product design from iisc bangalore uh, and phd from iit bombay for his uh, terminal degree he worked on medical application of 3d printing his industrial assignments include titan tanis crompton Gravy, Crompton Gravis and presently at Imaginarium. He joined Imaginarium as CEO, CEO and is presently de designated as mentor, mentor director. He has taught design at ISC, NIFT, GSSAT and NFFT. He was professor and head uh, project office IIC, IICD Jaipur. He also teaches courses on emerging technology and its impact at uh, SPGA IMR and KJ Somaya Business School. He is also mentor at uh, KJIT, K, uh, KJIT Bhumneshwar and guides uh, startups. Dr. Rao is associated with <clears throat> many industry bodies such as CII, uh, FIFI, uh, NASCOM, BIS, IAMF, Atal Innovation Mission, uh, uh, and many more. Presently, he is part of a member CII National Committee on Design 2019-2021. As CIA uh, as CIA conference chairman, he has successfully led CII 3D printing conference 2019 at Mumbai as conference chair uh, chairman. Uh, sir, we are grateful uh, to welcome you, uh, uh, welcome you, and we are uh, thankful to uh, uh, accepting our uh, uh, invitation. Welcome, sir. Welcome, sir. I also uh, welcome our beloved principal, uh, I. N. Patel, uh, uh, sir, uh, in this particular uh, bootcamp. Uh, uh, the head of the department of our department, mechanical engineering department and head of the department of uh, electronics department could not join uh, uh, today uh, meeting because of some busy schedule but uh, tomorrow they will join and uh, grace the occasion so uh, that is that i i welcome all the faculty members uh, of uh, uh, the bbm and uh, trs and lastly i also welcome without this student of course this program is not being uh, going to successful so i welcome all the students who are going to uh, get some knowledge about field printing uh, so welcome students so thank you thank you thank you thank you so much dr vinay patel sir and now i would like to request the president of today's event our respected principal dr indrajit patel sir to give his presidential speech. Namaskar and good afternoon to all present on this digital platform for very innovative approach to educate students virtually, virtually but feeling reality. And we are lucky today to have a very distinguished speaker great academician, great internationalist, and great administrator, Dr. Guru Prasad Rao, who has very rich experience so far as academic and industry interface is concerned. I acknowledge the presence of the TRS team, the mentor, Dr. Vinay Patel, head of the departments, faculty colleagues, and dear student members. Robotic Society of India Student Chapter BBM within short period of establishment one and a half year back have availed a great mileage in terms of the activities connected to robotics and allied technology. The mentorship and guidance of all the faculty advisors have led to Birla Vishwakarma Vihavad Vidyalai on a state and national front by winning Robo Fest 1.0 organized by DST in Goose Coast and entering the final round, the five teams 
in the RoboFest 2.0. So this is a collective effort of very meticulous and dedicated students and mentorship and motivation of the faculty advisors for these achievements. Even during pandemic, the society has organized webinars, some workshop, and physical assistance and mentorship to the students who are connected with Robotic Society Chapter at BBM. Team Bila Vishwakarma Mahavidyalaya worked with a vision to produce globally employable, innovative engineers with the core values. So Team BBM focus in each and every attributes which are listed in our vision statement by way of delivering through the regular pedagogy, learning beyond curriculum, exposure to your classrooms and laboratories, and results we are finding the success of the robotic society, IEEE, IEI, CSI, IST, all the professional body at Birla Vishwakarma Mahavidyalai, whether it is the faculty centric or the student centric, the activities are taken in a very holistic way. We aim to produce the graduates we are ready to deploy in the industries. The graduates, we are admissible, competent enough to crack the competitive exams for availing admissions to the IITs, IIMs, and reputed foreign universities. Charutra Vidya Mandal, our parent body, under the able and dynamic leadership of our own alumni, NGST Bikubai Patel, the Chairman CVM, and Chairman Board of Governors, Bila Vishwakarma Mahavidyalai, always motivate the students, the faculties, the department and the institute at large to carry out such type of the activities irrespective of whether we are availing funding from any government or any organizations. We have strong liaison with our alumni. So alumni, management and BBM family, they are the three sides of the equilateral triangle. We are working with head, hearts and hands together so that the youth, that is the students who have faith in Team Bila Vishwakarma Mahavidyalai can be obtained by way of nurturing, by way of mentoring, by way of educating, so that they are technocrats, they are educationalists, but they are the real part of building a team for the new India by 2022. So I congratulate Dr. Vinay Patel and entire team of TRA student at Bila Vishwakarma Mahavidyalai for taking such initiative to give the Hanson hands on training through virtual platform for the 3D printing. Sir, we are developing one dedicated this rapid prototyping lab with the funding from this uh, TQIP project as well as the generous contribution from our alumni as well as funding from our management. So within one month or month and a half, we'll have state of art laboratory so far as 3D and uh, this uh, rapid prototype uh, work is concerned and the robotic social of India, they have utilized these benefit, I mean, uh, facilities available. Even our, our alumni are supporting for such type of the initiative. So today is a great day. I request the students to appeal your friends to join this particular event. This will be very useful because even MHRD and AICT has listed these robotics and 3D printing or we can say the additive manufacturing as a one of the thrust area. So we, what we, we see, Pradhan Mantri, Yuva Kaushal Yojana or the initiative from the Niti Ayo is focused on this thrust area and this interdisciplinary approach. Sir, we have the students from civil, we have students from the mechanical, electrical and electronics as a member of RSI, as well as the winning team of this uh, RoboFest 1.0 and 2.0. So this will also create a very conducive environment for the multidisciplinary as well as interdisciplinary innovation learning, teaching learning process, leading towards the R&D activities, including startup and incubation activities. So on behalf of Board of Governors and Bila Vishwakarma Mahajalai, we acknowledge your gracious consideration for mentoring this particular workshop. You and your team will definitely deliver to the best of your commitment so that our team and we get motivated and to establish at least one center of excellence in this emerging. We have also put in our vision document that we are going to establish a smart manufacturing lab and we have such component of this additive manufacturing as well as other innovative practices 
So your visionary guidance and mentorship will also provide a path to the management team for implementation of the best practices which a premier institutions or leading organizations like you, you are delivering for the making India, Atmanar Brain India as well as New India. Thank you all for giving me this opportunity. May God bless all of us for a better future. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Those were very inspiring words. And now moving towards the session, I would like to invite Dr. Guru Prasad Rao. Please, sir. I'm trying to share my screen. Tell me if you can uh, see my screen. Yes, sir, it is visible. Yes, it is visible. So, is it full screen now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wonderful. I think for, let me first start thanking uh, Professor Vinay Patil, Patil and uh, Principal uh, Dr. Indrajit Patel and my colleague, uh, Mr. Soni, who actually brought this opportunity to us. Uh, I'm so happy that uh, we are able to interact virtually, you know, uh, while uh, Professor uh, uh, Patel wanted me to visit, uh, probably this is a very convenient way uh, to meet up uh, nowadays uh, because of, uh, you know, the pandemic. Uh, travel has been a, a big problem, and uh, but it is not deterring our spirit to exchange and uh, have a intellectual interactions. You know, and today I consider myself to be very privileged to address such a wonderful organization. You know, uh, the Birla Vidya Mandir, with uh, such a uh, you know great uh, history and. Uh, uh, very eminent, uh, you know, faculty um, team and principal. Uh, he mentioned about the equilateral triangle of faculty, alumni, and students. I would like to say, for my industry is concerned, it is also equilateral triangle because it is going to say uh, at one side the institute, the other side our resources, your students, you know, for the future resource of the country and to the industries and industry itself will also form a kind of a equilateral triangle. I would like to uh, thank all the, also the organizers, the Robotic Society of India. Uh, there is a lot to connect to this particular topic, 3D printing, because 3D printing as a practitioner, I can say it's a robot, right? It is a robot which can create objects and uh, it is like uh, you, you don't have to have the so-called uh, the skill of Vishwakarma today because Vishwakarma was associated as the uh, celestial or uh, uh, the god of, uh, uh, you know, engineering, correct? All skills, all that is the aesthetics, all that is, uh, you know, uh, very intricate, you know, uh, bringing beauty of life, you know, uh, in every sphere. Uh, such a uh, capability or skill today, this robot called 3D printing is going to uh, address, you know. So you don't have to really be a sculptor. You don't have to go through a, a rigorous training on uh, clay modeling or all that, you know. All you have to do is go to your computer, create an entity, and you can also create it by giving it to a mission. Uh, or a robot called 3D printer. So today's our uh, boot camp, as we can call it, is actually boot camp. Why it's called as boot camp? It's because boot camps are meant for the foot soldiers. So I consider uh, this uh, moment very auspicious because all of you are the foot soldiers. You are getting exposed to a technology which you probably may know already, uh, but in a much detailed manner with a kind of a, uh, a fast rigor of uh, inputs that is going to trigger, stimulate, provoke, 
all of you to be an innovator, a designer, and an entrepreneur. You know. In fact, today, the colleges are a kind of uh, technopreneurs. You know, we can say uh, it is like uh, uh, they're creating technopreneurs, designpreneurs, who go on to build the future of India. The Atma Nirbharata, what uh, Professor also mentioned, is largely happening a lot because of uh, such involvement of students. You know, uh, there are a lot of people who would uh, look for a job in a company and a lot others are also thinking of creating an enterprise which can give a job to many people. You know, that's the greatest thing. And uh, today we are in the golden uh, period of the Indian entrepreneurial uh, dream, you know. With this, I would like to once again thank the organizers for their very generous introduction and the host. And uh, I would like to start my uh, journey. Um, so it's a general disclaimer. And uh, this is the plan. Of course, this is a, uh, whatever you saw was a little old one. Uh, so we are going to talk about what is known as the art of making things. You know, why 3D printer is required. 3D printer is required because you want to make things. So, uh, but how people have been doing things so far is also a very important piece of thing, uh, history, uh, piece of knowledge we need to have. Man, you know, he has been expressing himself. The prehistoric man, uh, woman, or you know, children, they created a kind of a history, you know, records in the caves by drawing whatever they saw. You can see some of these as examples of the early record keeping, you know. And uh, we know, you know, the advent of uh, hand tools because human hands are not capable of doing digging, for example or even fighting an animal. We don't have horn. We don't have uh, 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 a larger tooth, which is uh, characteristic of a carnivorous animal. So we have to depend on some tools, you know, and that's how people first found strong uh, material, which can help them protect themselves, is these stones. Later on, they also started taking some kind of a mechanical advantage by adding a liver and all, by this, uh, you know, bamboo uh, or the wooden, uh, uh, you know, stem what you have, which is bound and with a stone, they're able to have a leverage and they're able to achieve better, precise, you know, hits, their, uh, you know, hunting and all, you know. And uh, in fact, the early record keeping, time keeping was also uh, seen how people uh, used whatever left in the uh, surroundings. For example, there's a bone which is uh, very old, you know, prehistoric, where they tried to create some kind of a record by counting. So the computation what we attribute today and all the development what we see, uh, it, it actually traces back to these days when they actually started accounting counting. And in fact, the artifacts was not something which was uh, uh, made for fun, made to gift as a luxury, but it was a bare need to contain water, uh, have grains, or even to uh, store, uh, for example, their riches, the, the gold or coins or whatever, you know. And you can see the early days, it was a very basic form. It started taking a better aesthetics as we went by in the ages. Each one actually kind of marking a milestone. You know, uh, what, what was the prehistoric uh, uh, things, what came during uh, the medieval period, what is today, they all have they indirectly refer to some kind of uh, technology advancements. And today, we are in the uh, post-21st century now, 
we are at the cusp of industrial 4. Point, of industry 4.0 and uh, the kind of technologies what we have you know and we are going to again look at one more technology that is uh, trying to create all this but in a different way you can see this the kind of things what people have created they're all additive they're all additive because they took a piece of clay and they put them together and shape them you know and this is all additive you know how they made things so we can see by the medieval uh, ages and even in th th you no know, 1500 bc they were able to actually divide divide a circle so that they can apportion and put a motif there you know very accurately you know it has not changed you know the form has not changed because that is a fundamental thing to uh, store something but today you have uh, uh, all these things are being made but in a very large scale right the potter can make pots uh, few numbers but today uh, a ceramic unit can make uh, thousands and millions because of the mechanization right and so even uh, in the early ages the metal were not uh, uh, produced by melting they were all uh, kind of a uh, stone like thing which are nuggets which are available in the nature freely be it uh, uh, copper or gold you know and uh, in fact uh, they had uh, all these uh, small uh, um, artifacts uh, mostly tools you know in order to hunt they had all these made you know which were early uh, metal applications and you can see by bronze age some of these artifacts or even today we can sit back and wonder how they did it how they thought about it you know they used bee wax to make the figure in what you see in the middle how they uh, understood that a wax can be formed and it can be melted and you can pour a metal so the investment casting was there uh, it is a very ancient technology you know even today we use it even today at imagine we use it you know and to the one on the right hand side you have a vase which is so beautiful you know the technology has been uh, attaining the uh, uh, finesse you know what we see today looking at indian uh, some of the traditions we had our own rich tradition of stone carving at harappa and mohenjodaro the priest what you see is a great example of how they understood forms how they could represent artifacts and the tools what they made you know this takes a this gives us some kind of a insight into the type of technologies what the ancient uh, indians had particularly those uh, pillars which are not carved out of some soap but uh, stones you know precise and accurate they are able to divide a circle so they knew uh, the value of pi so that they could actually uh, divide a circle into uh, equal parts or whatever they need so uh, if we take back you know look into the, those uh, the way uh, the whole um, uh, art of making started a piece of clay they started pinching and they could make a, a pot like this what you see on the screen <coughs> then what you see here is <coughs> a, a clay rings which are placed one above the other they smudge together and you build a some kind of a height and this is how some parts of the world people were doing pots there are some regions in uh, iran they still do things like this you know 
we all are very familiar with this kumbhar the potter's wheel and how he does it probably uh, this is going on for probably uh, some 10000 years uh, people using these and uh, you know we always get uh, these as artifacts in any excavations and today there are a limited use of hands also you know with all the tools uh, we still have some of the handicrafts what we call handicrafts and uh, the whole industry was uh, not there earlier it was all about the craft people wanted to keep themselves warm they found whatever they have found nature around they started using them you know and the cottage industry was born and uh, you can see today cottage industry also has its own market they create stuff uh, great stuff but they are limited in quantity you know you cannot find one artifact some 10000 20000 one million like that you no know, each one uh, different varieties will be there they are not consistent they are same but they are similar they not the same the precision is not there you know uh, so uh, you can see uh, this is what is uh, art uh, market if you go and see even today uh, well uh, the factories the uh, explosion of uh, the human uh, uh, population led to large scale demand of things and so instead of people sitting at home there is no discipline so they invited people to come to a place called factory and this place is like very much like home instead of keep sitting at home they'll come to factory and there are supervisors who will guide them what to do and you see there is no mechanization here they're all sitting and doing the same kind of craft they used to do at home right and this led to further mechanization that is using a large amount of energy with mechanical advantage you know levers flywheel all that you know and anvil hammer i know all that so they were able to actually use energy in much better way but industrial revolution actually started with pumping of large amount of energy into making things so that started with mechanization like this one and also steam power okay water power and uh, you can see the industrial revolution uh, every city was looking like this highly polluted a lot of siren bombay itself was looking like this surat was looking like this ahmedabad was looking like this you know and today i think uh, they are uh, slowly going to become a thing of past because there is a lot of awareness on environmental protection how the factories have to be in that direction the new technology what we are discussing today 3d printing is a kind of uh, technology wherein it is uh, very noiseless i cannot say noiseless they do make noise uh, there is no oil and uh, they work on uh, less power so uh, we are actually looking at a, a greener manufacturing option but before that you know a uh, lot of factory line system was born where one side you get a chassis with uh, you know all the things put by every workman and toward the end uh, the car is uh, uh, given four wheels and it wheels out as a car you know and that's how the production system of ford was looking like this looks like a tavela of a you know a diary you know that to a modern diary they see diary you know, may look like this but today every company uses a production line you know be, be it maruti is a hero motor car hyundai or whoever you know they have a production line you know that's a concept which uh, got uh, developed during ford time and what ford did brilliant thing he was not a great inventor he saw steam engine already available and he saw people taking a cart you know horse driven cart said why don't i replace horse by engine so he just put replaced the horse with the engine and that became car you know he became the inventor of ford is considered to be the inventor of car you know so it is a kind of a incremental thing 
not uh, something like uh, what Thomas Alva Edison uh, discovered, uh, you know, bulb and all that. They're all, they put in a lot of effort. But Henry Ford was a very smart fellow. He is more of an innovator than an inventor. So this is the difference between an inventor and an innovator. Innovator is a guy who has a lot of uh, uh, common sense business acumen who would probably uh, look at things and he uh, combines them together in order to bring in a greater good and uh, acceptance by society and a, a great value, you know, addition. In that sense, you know, uh, Henry Ford is a innovator, you know, just like your uh, Steve Jobs, you know, he can be, he's also an uh, innovator, not an inventor. You know, he did, in, did not invent anything, but he was able to pick right people, put them together, make a system, you know, uh, at subsystem level, things were already, always there. And, uh, well, moving forward, uh, the world saw a lot of development in terms of radio, uh, the, uh, the valve radio and all that. Uh, before that, there was all mechanical computing that was happening, you know. And what you see here is uh, that used the first electromechanical calculator. In fact, uh, Professor mentioned about how the robotic society has members from mechanical, electronics, electrical, computer science and all. In fact, a, a new discipline was born, uh, which is having... Uh, some mechanical, some electronics together, and the electrical also. Uh, we call it as mechatronics. And in fact, mechatronics has a lot of synergy with your uh, uh, the student chapter, the Robotic uh, Society of India, a student chapter, because uh, uh, they there is always, uh, when you say robot, it has got mechanical uh, elements, it has got uh, electrical uh, things and also controls which are essentially electronics. So mechanical, electrical, electronics. And today, a uh, lot of these electronics also are programmable. So IT also comes in, programming also comes in. In, in a way, I should uh, say, we, when we were students, we had a great fun you know, making all this. Uh, we used to make uh, a lot of uh, radios, valve radios, transistor radios, and later on, uh, the basic stamp, uh, the big processors, we used to make a lot of things, fun stuff, you know, motors, for example, uh, motor control and all that, uh, which has led to a great uh, uh, discipline called elect uh, mechatronics. And mechatronics is increasingly becoming very important, even from the point of view of uh, Industry 4.0. You know, uh, how we are going to have the world uh, which is going to be controlled by um, uh, some kind of uh, um, long distance, non-contact stuff. Uh, it's all done by uh, such developments. And production technology, we can say uh, anything we call, you know, production technology, uh, art of making things is uh, born and uh, we study that as a discipline in engineering as a production technology. And in production technology, you have uh, three major uh, areas, subtractive, where you remove, just like uh, how you carve out a stone, and or you can join, weld them, or glue them, uh, like plywood, for example. Plywood is uh, additive, right? And uh, painting, plating, and all these are, uh, uh, in fact, building is built of, uh, made up of a lot of bricks, right? Of course. Not everything is uh, brick now. A lot of steel glass also goes in buildings. The earlier days, uh, people used to say brick, brick, and uh, every brick is put together to make a building. You know, Again, it is additive. Uh, formative is another way wherein we neither add or subtract. We actually bend or form, you know. Uh, so these are the three major, you know, ways by which we can build the entire world, you know. So subtractive, we call it as minus, additive, we close a plus, and formative, sometimes we call it as zero also. You know, so you can see here, these are all listed for you. And within which, additive manufacturing, additive uh, uh, process 
Kandar, we have 3D printing. So 3D printing is a subset of additive processes. Additive processes are what? Casting, welding, cladding, painting, plating, gluing, lamination, coating, 3D printing also, right? And for a long time, people have been calling it as additive manufacturing. Well, it is a little loaded term. Manufacturing means making millions, right? Not making one or two. So I always say it is a little bit loaded term, but well, we are somewhere going there. And you can see zero process or bending, extrusion, drawing, forming, forging, coining, rolling, knurling, embossing. And likewise, you have, uh, you know, subtractive, turning, shaping, milling, drilling, planing, broaching, trepanning, sawing, reaming, grinding, filing, chipping, and many more. So design, people have been designing things, you know, for a particular purpose, they used to give a, um, anatomy to a, uh, a structure uh, or a form to a uh, thing which is going to encase and be used, you know, like uh, what you have an example as iron here. You know, it's an iterative process. People keep on doing many of them, try them out and finalize one or many. And so the world over, this uh, innovation is uh, done through what is known as a new product design framework. And this framework is uh, also sometimes later people popularized as design thinking. You know? So uh, first of all, you take a problem and you try to solve the problem by generating a lot of idea. And these ideas are then filtered using a screen. That means what cost, what material, what process and all that. Then you go into details of it. Details mean nut and bolts like thickness, material, process, who will do it, where they do it, etc. Or 5W1H will be in design, detailing. And then after having done that, this is a, still a concept you know, on paper or your mind. It has to be tested. So the testing invariably is done actually making first model. First model is called as prototype. Proto means first. You know. uh, so prototype means the first model is going to validate the design. And so world over, people have been making this prototype in order to uh, see that a project is a product is launched. They cannot do it unless they debug all the problems a prototype has. You know, it's very important. In fact, it's a business case. Why it's a business case? Making of uh, making prototype is the cost committed curve and the cost incurred curve are little uh, opposite, you know. And so uh, while we generate concept, it doesn't uh, really cost much. But as we move on in uh, detailed design, also it doesn't cost much. But when we want to make it, you can see it escalates. That means if I start with a bad idea and uh, put all my money, I might be wrong actually. So I need to uh, uh, do it very carefully. And this is done by actually making, instead of making a final product, you make a prototype. A prototype can be a, a small model or a big model or a one is to one model, depending on uh, the um, um, evaluation you want, you're looking for. So world over people are looking at, you know, uh, making prototypes. And you can see here, really why it is very important for us in the uh, NPD process of planning, there is no need requirement of pre prototype. For concept development, there is a lot of uh, requirement. System level design. What is system level design? I can have an engine which is uh, put in the front or in the back, or it can be on the top or it can be in the bottom. So it is a kind of moving a subsystem, you know, in a configuration that is best suited for the context. It's called system level design. You know, for example, in e-vehicles, where you want to keep the battery, you know, you can keep it a battery on the top, or it can, you can be it can be kept in the bottom. Um, but probably you will settle for safety reasons. You may want to keep it in the back, you know, so it doesn't get smashed 
So no, no battery is ever put in the front because it is always safe to put it in the back. So this is called a system design. You know, there also sometimes people do use prototypes. Detail design. Sometimes detail design also people want to check out a particular feature, how a gear works, how a cam works, how a locking works. So they may do a particular part of that uh, for a detailing, they may do a prototype. And testing and refinement, you can see there are three stars here. Why there are three stars here? See, idea is something, you know, when you think of an idea and you bring it without properly uh, planning it, or it is something like you have a uh, idea which is half-baked, not fully, you know, thought through. Uh, who will benefit from that? Of course, customers will never know about it. You know, a customer will not know. The competitor will look at it and he will improve upon it. So when you bring a bad idea to market, it is your competitor who will actually benefit, you know, and he will improve on it. It is like a human intellect, you know, if I have an idea, you can improve on it. And if you have an idea, I can improve on it. And so it is ideas are highly contagious. So it's very important for the companies, entrepreneurs to uh, have a uh, business uh, uh, leverage, you know, for my design or a new product, what he's going to bring. If the others will copy, uh, one may say, well, there is a patenting and all that, but it is not going to really help. Copyright is right to copy. You know, it is very difficult to actually establish uh, that uh, uh, they should not do it and take legal action. So what people do, they want to test an idea. They, if at all it fails, it has to fail in the idea kitchen. It has to fail in their own lab, R&D. And so uh, nobody knows about it. So you keep on improving on it. You create a version one, version two, version three, version four. And when you bring out version one, somebody is going to copy, let them copy. You bring out uh, version two. And again, version two is launched. Somebody will start copying version two. You bring, will come out with version three. So that is the strategy. Strategy is to compete with not with somebody else, compete with yourself by continuously innovating. And that is possible only through prototyping, you know, because you are able to uh, test it. And uh, also testing gives you a feedback and that feedback will go back to the uh, drawing board or uh, the uh, design process. Again, you are going to have a so features are built this way. You know, you can just imagine how Apple, the world's most uh, respected design um, driven uh, enterprise is able to uh, leverage its developments largely to the prototyping what they have. But prototyping itself was taking a lot of time. And that's when people like Chuck Hull and all, they found a way to make these prototypes faster, quicker, and directly from probably CAD, like they, you know. We'll come back to that, uh, very interesting. Uh, so how we used to do prototype before all these new technologies came, we used to actually do by hand. So uh, I've seen, uh, you know, I've used clay, I've used wood, uh, puff material, cardboards, then electrical electronics circuits, we used to check by using a, a breadboard like this. And you can see a kind of a computer manifold. The whole thing is made by a packing box, you know. A screen is a real screen, real joystick, real buttons, but outside is all made up. So it is something like toying with the ideas, whatever is around you quickly, so that you arrive at a right way of doing things, you know, quickly. So prototyping becomes a very important thing. At this point of time, actually, the advent of computers brought in a lot of new capabilities. Like what? Like all this, you know we could actually virtually model anything and everything uh, like computers, uh, the, the factory layout or like uh, simulation. You can actually test a part, you know, by just by simulating. Kinematics can be checked, whether it, there is a, a meshing somewhere happening, we, whether there is uh, any uh, kind of drag happening, uh, where may, 
know, uh, increase somewhere. All that visualization, all are possible today. You know, we're using a computer. So it has really given a, a lot of uh, um, wings to our imagination, I can say. But when you go to somebody who is financing your boss or the company head or the venture capitalist, Sir, I have done this. It works perfectly fine on the computer. Please fund me. Will they fund you? No, they will not fund you because they, what you have thought through, they cannot see that, and they are not sure whether it works or not. What you see is a virtual model on the computer. How? So they would insist for a real model, and that's where you know making prototype becomes a very very important thing. without which you cannot even as a startup get funded you know so we have supported more than 100 startups you know today or more uh, who could actually quickly make high fidelity uh, working models by which they got funded you know because the uh, funding agency will always look at new development as with suspicion they don't know it works or not Uh, whether my money invested is safe or not, they don't know. So that's where the prototyping is going to really help. And the whole thing, you know, the digitization of manufacturing is happening since the advent of uh, numerical control. Then computer numerically controlled. We had MRP one, MRP two. Uh, you know, the PDMs, the ERP, and today PLM is also over. We are forging ahead with the industry four point zero. you can see here uh, the 3d printing the important subject what we are going to discuss today you know needs all this foundation you know and uh, it is actually a part of uh, industry uh, 3.0 you can say 3d printing is there in the third block what you see and with all the capability what we have uh, we are able to uh, dream of a regime which is going to be controlled without any contact from a long distance with the high speed internet autonomous robots and that is called as industry 4.0 i am sure many of you are looking at it uh, working on it and uh, the robotic society uh, is also going to play an important role here in fact in iisc bosch has established uh, something called as a, a center of excellence for a cyber physical system and the cyber physical systems physical side is going to be brought out by 3d printers because the, it is that entity which is going to create things what we can hold and explore in hands well moving forward conventional manufacturing lot of waste of full energy you start with a, a lot of bulk of material and you remove them why having such a bulk of material why remove them you know was a thought when people started looking at new ways to make things even today a bulk of things around us is manufactured by this conventional or subtractive manufacturing it uh, demands a lot of energy and you know material goes as waste we cannot recycle them though we can recycle uh, but it it has its own cycle you know it will have a lot of cost added to it so what is the new way of making things then it is a regime wherein we can build parts directly from cad to part you know a cad is a virtual object as we know on a computer like this and how can we have a part which can be made physically you can hold it you know so it is not a kind of a, a virtual reality but it is a real reality you know so virtual to real is the uh, game and uh, so uh, it is all about converting a, a doodle to a part you know a doodle to a computer model to a computer rendering and finally a product you can hold in hand and explore that is the beauty so sometimes we call it as uh, the art to part transformation okay in fact how does uh, it go about so idea is sketched first and then uh, that idea has to go into computer you create a computer entity and convert into various file formats you know which you saw and these uh, 
is virtually it is sliced and it is put back virtually and what you did virtually will be physically done by a robot called 3d printer because it is putting the layers back and then you get and you can also do a lot of transformations so again you watch this animation idea sketch is converted to 3d model and it is exported a triangulated model the software is slicing it and the g codes are generated and these slices are put back or integrated to get the product and you can see 3d printer is kind of a robot which will not ask you any question as long as there is a tool path available in g code it will start building of course material is required well in fact many people say oh 3d printer i saw it is uh, it uses wires well they are right some people say no no i have seen a 3d printer which uses liquid oh liquid it uses uh, wires it uses uh, filaments it uses liquid some people say no it uses powder also so well uh, one may wonder you know they may start arguing like these blind people you know that 3d printing means that in a way 3d printing is everything you know it uses material which are like liquid in sla they use powder in sls they use a filament in ftm they use sheets of things whether it's a vinyl or paper in loam it can be even a sheet of uh, sheets of metal right loam is there and binder jetting uh, it uses uh, powder and some kind of a glue metal jetting again it uses the material itself just like toothpaste you know uh, which gets hardened and in fact there is one more i'm going to show you tomorrow ded is there digital direct digital manufacturing or a directed energy deposition ded is also one more which is going to be added to this i'll show it tomorrow uh, well that is that's how the whole thing is developing you know technology so by definition what it is then 3d printing is not one it is a set of technologies as you can agree now 3d printing is a set of technology which help to fabricate 3d objects layer upon layer from a digital input data right and that digital input data is very very important okay i uh, will come to that why it is called so uh, let us see and you can see uh, you all are, can agree now uh, 3d printing is lot greener manufacturing process because it leaves less scrap it also has less demand on energy now very important these are some of these pioneers you know uh, dr kodama chakhal coral decoid steven scott cram all of them have come out with their own new technologies that is the beauty of the patenting you know uh, when you somebody patents others will learn about it and they also try to uh, think in a different way this is called creativity and a lot of creativity we can see in 3d printing because that's how every day we have a new name a new process coming up every day you know in order to make it better and uh, chakhal uh, charles hull in 83 developed a very simple uh, process he called it stereo lithography a very wonderful name stereo means depth lithography means printing so he had already called it as 3d printing in, uh, indirectly and his technology even today is a very very important technology it's a very seminal contribution by uh, you know uh, chakhal in fact his uh, 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 kind of uh, um, what i can say um, there was somebody are you able to see this can i get a feedback you are able to see my screen yes sir yes sir we can okay. yes okay i think somebody entered as there was some dis distraction uh, you can see the first part made so he used a photosensitive uh, liquid you know and photosensitivity is uh, because of some material inside obviously the monomer with the impingement of a laser you know it gets extra energy h nu 
and there's a cross linkage that happens so the liquid turns to a crystalline solid because they cross linkage and we call it as uh, stereolithography or uh, photopolymerization okay the chemical reaction um, which uh, helps us to define this is called as photopolymerization polymerization we know you know single chain becomes polychain and uh, photo is uh, one a source of energy that gives brings about the polymerization that's called photopolymerization uh, you can see this this is the photopolymerization setup let us see uh, a kind of animation of this uh, so you can see laser source optics and mirror galveno is uh, trying to make a kind of uh, drawing and every level you get a kind of uh, model made and uh, finally it is ejected so you can see how it is ejecting out curiously enough this uh, platform is all perforated because uh, otherwise it will uh, act like a, a piston you know going up and down is uh, impossible in a kind of uh, uh, liquid uh, incompressible liquid you know uh, whatever whether it is uh, newtonian or non newtonian uh, you cannot have a piston uh, going down uh, you know and uh, going up also is difficult so they have made the whole thing perforated you can see the liquid is transparent the objects which are created are also transparent you know and of course we further cure them in order to you know lock and uh, stop the photopolymerization it is washed with iso uh, propyl alcohol or carbon tetrachloride or whatever like that solvent then they dry it you know and the second technology uh, which is uh, supposed to be one of the greatest technologies of 3d printing is uh, selective laser sintering you know uh, core decord was in uh, Uh, austin um, uh, texas university austin and he was a uh, engineering college student like you and this was his project you know and his project uh, bachelor's project went to masters and uh, to do his phd also later on and they established a company much later dtm and today of course there are many uh, who make it uh, one is eos and the other one is uh, 3d systems and technology since the patents have got expired many can do it now right and so selective laser sintering why i say it is very very important of all the uh, technologies because you can make impossible things here yes what is impossible impossible is something i want to make a ball inside a ball inside a ball you know how can i make it you know in nature we can find it but not in manufacturing i cannot injection mold it okay but uh, because this guy uh, coil record thought of uh, powder the powder if we maintain some kind of a hole or crevice a tolerance is given so powder can be taken out so that you can have things which are uh, assembled already okay pre assembled uh, you can build things which are pre assembled and that was hitherto was not uh, possible and i will say you know like a chain and all we can make uh, white chain you entire uh, you know you can make a cloth also uh, using the sls people have made many things flexible things also so uh, because it is made up of powder and powder can be uh, easily uh, the inter uh, the the uh, the between the parts powder can be removed and you can establish kind of a linkage uh, that is uh, sound uh, just like what you achieve in assembly you know so uh, this is a wonderful technology and you can see how it works uh, you know powder is rolled out laser is uh, same very much similar to what we saw in sls sla here we are seeing in sls also so if you uh, zoom on to this you can see the kind of uh, uh, you know 
it brings the two particles together and it kind of welds them. And uh, because the Gaussian distribution of energy, even the bottom is also going to get welded. And every layer, you know, is going to be fused this way and uh, it goes on to build the entire body, right? You can see this is uh, our, uh, you can see here laser print something, the concentric circles, like a phantom drawing something, you know, it is, uh, you cannot see the laser itself. The sintering is happening. That becomes a sheet and one more, one more layer comes. Again, it gets sintered in the same place and you end up getting a concentric tubes you know, like that, whatever it is, you know, as a part, as driven by the CAD. You know, I cannot control this. The CAD is controlling this, you know, very important. You can see the whole thing is ejected out. It's called as cake and we uh, kind of uh, rub off the extra powder surrounding the sintered part, it, much like how an archaeologist will excavate the artifacts from the ground. You know, we are going to remove them and uh, create this, you know, wonderful, isn't it? And here these wheels, what you see of this car, they actually work, they can rotate because it is made of powder, powder can come in a very fine crevice, you know, very important. Then we have uh, one more technology called FDM. FDM has a very interesting thing, you know. Uh, uh, the inventor's daughter, you know, the tiny little daughter, uh, she has a toy and that is broken. And uh, I think she loses some part of it. And she says, can I not get this uh, fixed? And uh, uh, father says, maybe I'll buy you a new one. She says, no, I want this only. I want this to, to be repaired, you know. And that's where he thinks uh, there should have been a, a, a process by which I can go in a particular place, I can do some repair, you know. And that's uh, the driver for this uh, technology to be there. So husband and wife, they both, uh, uh, you know, uh, formed a company. Today, status is uh, the company is a big one. They have a lot of uh, technologies uh, and this is one of the most popular of all the technologies because the technology is fairly simple, uh, you know, to uh, execute, understand and execute, build also. And the patent rights got expired somewhere in 2009 or so. Baker uh, Board started making them and this became an open source. So today, you see one on the top, you have a a pro, uh, you know, status mission on the top. Uh, in the four, in the bottom, you have a red small one. It's our printer. Okay, the top one will cost you in crores. You know, a, a couple of crores it will cost you. The bottom one will be in lakhs, maybe fifty thousand or so. And you see the black part which is made. Both these make the same part. What is the difference then? No difference. Actually, company statuses did not innovate enough to fortify their patent, you know. They somehow did not do a lot of innovations there, you know, because it was uh, the parents and they had limited, uh, you know, commitment on this. And uh, later on, they could not drive it, actually, you know, the whole thing. Um, but uh, there were some changes in scale, range extinction and all that, but they... Uh, basically did not innovate much, you know. And uh, in the open source, people have innovated a lot today, you know. Uh, only difference is the, the small mission, what you see here, which is 50,000, uh, may work today, tomorrow, it may not work. The big one, it will work all the time, 24 by 7, because of the reliability built. Yes. That is the difference. So companies don't buy a small one. They would rather go for a label because money is invested to make business. It doesn't make sense, you know. Cheap is not economical, they say. Something cheap is not economical. So if somebody says, okay, small, I want to have a small mission, you can expect small things only from that. You cannot expect. But you want to learn, you want to tinker, you want to do some R&D, or just you want to have fun, buy a small mission, okay. But if you want to give a business, 
You have promised somebody, you have taken money, advance money, you want to deliver them tomorrow. Then the small one may work, may not work. The, the big one will always work, you know. So that is very important, you know, industry, why they want to go for established players is that reason why they want to go for. And uh, you also have, uh, this is one make about animation, we can see. And uh, you have then uh, one more technology, laminated object manufacturing. So wonderful technology, long time ago, uh, you know, uh, during the same 92, 93, 95, it was there. A company uh, which used to manufacture was called Halysis. But somehow no takers, you know, laser was taken. And like your PVC uh, sheets were taken and uh, they were laminated, you know. And they used to make wonderful objects. I have seen them. But somehow uh, industry did not uh, find it very exciting, you know, because it was not metal. It was not uh, very durable. Uh, in the use context, it was failing. Uh, so prototype, okay, type of thing, you know. So people somehow dumped this. This company got closed also, you know, the Halysis. Much later, I, Ireland company, uh, MCOR started using paper. They used, started using, instead of laser cutting, they used to use blade. And they used uh, uh, paper, you know, A4 sheets paper, just like what we see, uh, load in a printer. Uh, like that, uh, that can make this juicy orange what you see in the bottom, you know. But somehow industry also rejected this because uh, it doesn't have a long life. Uh, it doesn't have industrial application possible, you know. Uh, for anything, you no know, industrial application is very, very important to create value. You know? Then came one more technology called binder jetting. And binder jetting, you know, it is something like this. You know, you go to kitchen, you have some atta, and take some glue and put it on the atta. What will happen? The glue will start absorbing the atta. And uh, it becomes like a hot stone, you know, a globule or whatever. You know. The same technology is used here. So you have a platform on which you kind of uh, screen print a glue and pour the powder there, like a rangoli. So the whole thing, the glue will absorb, and that becomes like a kind of a um, cardboard. Okay. Then again, I feel more of it. Again, there is a stencil that will have a glue, and again, you pour the powder. So you're able to build a volume. Now, this glue can be, uh, you know, sent to a print head. You know, the print head will start doing that. And of, of course, the powder, it can be gypsum powder or it could be plaster Paris or anything like that, you know, some kind of powder which can be spread. And the glue will absorb because the binding we call it as a binder setting, you know. And in this also, supposing you have a white uh, material, I can have a print head to dispense any color at that particular level. So that's how we are able to make, uh, you know, uh, colorful models also in this. But, you know, because it is made up of otter like material, it is not very strong. So if I drop it, it will break like a clay or a, a china ware, or, you know, like that, you know, stone ware. It uh, breaks. It is not very strong. So again, industrial application was not there. So people find it, but not so much until HP came with a capability of uh, making this in nylon. Uh, this technology was not actually getting up, you know, uh, industrially uh, uh, viable. You can see the demo of this, very wonderful. So it looks in the beginning like an ordinary paper getting printed, you know, a house plan is printed. But actually the entire house is getting, when they uh, vacuum all the powder, remove all the stuff, you can see the emergence of the house. Such a wonderful, isn't it? Uh, the way to build things. Much later, a company which was uh, founded in uh, Israel, you know, um, Object, uh, Object was the company. And uh, they uh, 
today they are uh, uh, you know merged with statuses uh, statuses uh, or uh, you know object owns or statuses owns them whatever it is you know so they are now together and uh, you have uh, the object um, came out with a wonderful technology after sls i will say this is the most advanced technology because here concept of digital material was brought in that means you have a, a container a and container b they start mixing them in various proportions to get on one side a hard part and a soft part on the other side one side you get a opaque and on the other side you get a transparent part and all in between you know so you are able to play with the material property you know and this is what is going to be further explored as in uh, deeper understanding as uh, functionally graded material and all that okay people are able to uh, been able to mimic the actual nature by this uh, what does it mean for example this actuator which is floating in front of our eyes now like a g uh, zero gravity module in front of us is actually an actuator it has got a black o-ring which is very soft a gray a half white color you know manifold you know which is strong like abs and it has got a actuator in the bottom it is actually a switch actuator and it is very hard to uh, hard inside but soft to touch you know such capability by mixing material in one build is possible you know in fact people have tried even with the metal alloy sorts what if i deposit by metal wonderful things you can make the so 4d printing has come correct no by metal brings in the smartness smart materials you know so uh, in fact uh, the multi jetting has become a, a great uh, research area but it's very expensive today and uh, if you can make it affordable this technology will go like anything think of a tar getting built you know with all its uh, uh, layers you know in fact it is like human body only the human body the human you know after fertilization uh, you know the um, baby uh, is uh, manufactured within the you know sac you know mother's womb what we call in 9 months you know it has got more than 6 sigma you know accuracy and uh, Uh, what is uh, the kind of uh, uh, you know uh, quality products your bionic eyes you have a cpu and you have uh, the microphone the earphone uh, the pump which is your heart and the structural elements like tree you know scaffolding you have the skeleton which is very strong you know like a rock and soft muscles everything is built you know and so human beings we are mimicking so material jetting in somewhere that way mimicking that you know and you can see an animation here how it is like paste like consistency it is getting deposited towards the end there is a green color that is a uv light which is going to again uh, set this uh, paste like material into a hard uh, material the hard or soft depends you know, on the additives what you have here you can see here directed energy deposition is yet another thing which is uh, again opening up a, a whole lot of uh, new technologies there you know the binder jetting is there the powder bed fusion is there then a laser plasma uh, so people are trying with lot of things under one umbrella you know and uh, it's a umbrella term but a lot of other things have you know connections interlinkages with other technologies so they are able to uh, have a small area able to melt and uh, fill metal you know that's how always people have been uh, repairing a broken uh, casting or a defective casting to uh, fill in a porosity for example superficial uh, or uh, a surface uh, porosity can be filled by a melt pool you know? and somebody thought why don't we do it in fact in iit bombay professor k p karunakaran 
did the exact same thing. He took a welding machine, put it on a CNC fire access mission, and he was able to make a lot of things. But he did not find a you know uh, 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 company and uh, went forward because of his uh, academic uh, you know constraints. He could not do that. But you know that's what is happening in the Western world. Academic uh, researchers are able to establish a company and are able to spin off you know from universities. A lot of things like that. Even uh, in Leuven in Belgium, a lot of thing, things of chain from spin off from the universities. I'm sure all of you also will focus on it to build your own companies with a spin off, you know, and your projects, your research should come out to society serving people, you know, with some great value. You can see here how uh, these laser plasma and uh, um, electron beam and all, they result in a melt pool, you know, it is not about sticking of uh, the part, but of particles, but also uh, to have a melt pool, very much like a casting. So in a way, uh, 3D metal 3D printers are like a mini foundry. It's a miniature foundry because all things which are applied to foundry also apply here, right? And you can see this is a powder bed fusion and uh, we are able to uh, see the after effects of the uh, laser uh, because it is able to give you this spark but laser itself is invisible to human eyes. This is uh, a recent development. Uh, people are either they can use a wire or they can use a uh, metal powder that comes you know together and uh, in the center they have a laser or a plasma which goes and uh, you are going to have a metal melter at the tip, you know, which is going to be dropped on the substratum. Sometimes we call it a drop on demand, you know. Uh, so this is actually uh, making a lot of uh, uh, game changes in the industry. Any CNC mission can be converted into a metal additive manufacturing mission. And in fact, it can be made into a hybrid because of such uh, uh, technologies, you know. So there is a company called Meltio, uh, which is going to do exactly this. This is one of the uh, slides from Meltio only, what I'm showing. Uh, in fact, uh, all these missions come in all shapes and sizes. And so many of them, Rhenish, uh, 3D systems, uh, XJet, uh, then you have uh, Mflex, then you have EOS, GF, Concept Laser, SLM, so many of them. You know, G additive also is coming. They have their own range. And uh, in fact, this is a Kuka robot. This Kuka robot is also a 3D printer. How can we call this as a 3D printer? Because it is going to take digital data and it is going to dispense material and build a 3D object. So it can be, by definition, be called as a 3D printer. In fact, it is out of box 3D printer because it can print on that platform and all around this, you know, wherever the uh, thing goes, it, it, if you have a shelf, it can build on different shelves also. It can go up and do that. Now that is the kind of dexterity you have. In fact, in days to come, the so-called box-like 3D printers, what we see here, you know, all this will be thing of past. People are going to increasingly use uh, robots, and that's one more reason why. This talk is uh, particularly of great interest to the robotic society uh, because robots are going to take over. You know. So the potter who used to make pots now, or the uh, Michelangelo used to make those uh, wonderful sculptures, he is going to be replaced by a robot. A robot will make it. You know. And because it is driven by a cat, every time you get a small size or big size, precise, you know, every time, uh, because it is driven by the same kind of uh, digital data every time, you know. And so this is a doodler. So I'll ask a question, whether this 3D doodler, which works on the principle of FDM, filament deposition modeling, it has a filament there, blue, which is coming. Uh, I'm referring to the left side uh, image. 
and you can see that touching and uh, the there goes the um, it's like a glue gun you know uh, the material is coming out there and depositing it continuously now can we call this as a 3d printer by definition can we call it as a 3d printer anyone well you cannot call this as a 3d printer because there is no digital input data uh, it is going to be 4:30 very soon i would like to uh, take maybe 15 minutes more because we started the program a little later with the introductions and all so if i may um, uh, extend it is it okay organizers yes sir no problem okay, it's okay. wonderful thank you uh, so you can see here how a 3d doodler will work it works like this you know and you can see the hand is moving it no design data is moving it you know there is no slice or anything here there is no layer by layer here you know but same thing i'll ask another question if this is given to a cook or robot can we call it as a 3d printer question can we call uh, if hand is replaced by the robot can we call this a 3d printer yes sir it is called yes sir yes 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 sir then it will be called as a 3d printer right so like this one you know this is also making and here by definition we can call this as 3d printer because there is a digitally it is getting deposited something is getting built maybe there is no layers here it may work in a different way but anyhow this is also called as a 3d printer and uh, there are a lot of things in uh, world which are additive but not 3d printing like what like this one laddu <laughs> laddu is additive because bundia hai with a sugar syrup they make into a sphere so this is additive we made but it is not 3d printed you agree same way jalebi also is there jalebi also when they make it on the uh, oil when they deposit it it is like fdm but again it is not driven by a cad data so supposing that is driven by a cad data then it can also be called as a 3d printer you can see this again this additive but not 3d printing but beauty of this you see when i use whatever i use i can play around with this i can use cheese i can call it as cheese sandwich i can use a tomato i can call it a tomato sandwich i can use cucumbers i can use chutney here i call it chutney sandwich or i can put some uh, uh, jam i can say jam sandwich so people can keep on changing so that's what is uh, you know missing in our production technology today production technology like casting you just pour one material that's all alloy you pour it is all one one thing and you take uh, injection molding you inject one type of uh, material again you cannot play around with the material there you know of course there are some small modifications available like over uh, molding and all die casting also again uh, metal injection molding only one metal you know so you cannot play around with but in 3d printing what happens i can play around with every layer you know that is the beauty i can change the parameters of the laser or the material supply itself feed stock itself i can keep on changing them and uh, there i am able to control the property of material at a voxel level what is a voxel voxel is a 2d pixel 2d pixel uh, 2d pixel what we have that in 3d it becomes a voxel a it's a 3d pixel you know where at a pixel level whatever may be the size of the pixel we can define material property can be changed you know i don't know somebody is calling me Yeah. is it the organizers calling me 
No, it's not sir, maybe. I'm not taking the call. Uh, so, uh, you know, it was Dr. Adrian Bower in 2005. He started something called a printer printing itself, a parent and a child, you know. Uh, so, uh, replication of rapid prototyper project, riprap uh, project was, uh, this opened up uh, kind of uh, uh, the floodgates of this uh, maker movement, uh, the so-called uh, uh, open source, you know, uh, 3D printers. And so much so, people came out with uh, this cartoon that uh, 3D printer prints itself, you know, uh, like this, you know. But it, it, though it is not the same uh, way we can do, uh, but uh, today it has given rise to various types of uh, 3D printers we can see in the market. You know, I'm sure you have it. Uh, you have seen many such things. It is possible because uh, the patent got expired and uh, the open source material was available. You can Google search, build my 3D printer. You will get a lot of data there. A lot of uh, people started making it. The maker community, the hobbyists, they started uh, putting whatever uh, resource they had. People even started taking old uh, CD drive, DVD drive also to make them convert that into successfully laser uh, cutters, laser markers, and 3D printers also. You know, so that is the power of you know open source. And you can see here today, uh, 3D printing or additive manufacturing uh, is making deep inroads into every aspect of our life, jewelry, medical, FMCG packaging, lifestyle, architecture, automotive, aerospace, electronics, white goods, plastics, and many more, you know. And uh, in fact, uh, uh, some of these parts are unimaginable. They're not only impossible to make, impossible to think also. That is the beauty of it. And today, 3D printing is largely uh, used for six uh, major merits of this technology. One is part consolidation. That means I can combine um, uh, 10 parts to one, uh, 30 parts to one, 300 parts to one, like that. Now we can part consolidation. Then we can use quickly uh, Jigson fixtures for like a holding thing. Uh, for accuracy, we call it a Jigson fixtures uh, that can be made quickly, you know, within a matter of 10 minutes, 20 minutes, uh, number we can make it. The need for light weighting, wherever you need parts which are light, uh, very light in because of the presence of the Voronoi structures or lattice structures, one can make it uh, a less material content object, you know, with the same strength required. Uh, for the use concept, uh, co context, then you call it as a light weighting. Complexity, like jewelry and all Indian jewelry is very, very uh, complex, you know. And suppose you want to do, uh, then probably only by hand people used to do, you know. The uh, goldsmiths used to do, acharis used to do that. But today, uh, the filigree kind of thing people can do by 3D printing, you know, complexity it can always be handled by whatever complexity you can think of. If you come to Imaginarium, we make the world's most complicated, you know, uh, jewelry piece. And uh, in fact, one of our creations also got uh, awarded, you know, for design and the way it was put, uh, Guinness Book of World Records. You know. And probably I'll try to show tomorrow. And uh, uh, there is always a, a world which you needed uh, you know, uh, bulk production, 1 million or 2 million, things like that. If you need one part, the current uh, manufacturing setup, it is uh, not uh, agile to deliver that. So if you want anything, one part, probably 3D printing is the best way uh, you have. And need for customization is maximum in some areas like medical, you know, uh, for my spectacles, it's a unique uh, power what I have. So I need to make it specially for me. Same way, many things inside our body also, if you want a bone replacement to be uh, given, I cannot make and keep it in one million and uh, try to adjust it. It is not possible. So 
people try to make it compatible to that particular patient's needs so that's where customization comes into play and customization is also very expensive the normal injection molding die casting or forging cannot give you the customization required the only way would be to either fabricate by hand you know which is always there or that is carving by hand or you have to actually use a additive manufacturing process so people have been trying to build things which are big so we heard this is repeated everywhere even in chennai they have built iit madras they have built a thing and this is going on you know a demonstration of capability of uh, this technology and uh, some people ask so all the other technologies will go probably they will coexist you know they were not everything will go off so they have uh, tried to print big things they have also tried to print small things very important you can see this is iit karakpur's main building you know administrative building and uh, if you see the bottom 20 <laughs> There's 20 micrometers. That 20 micrometer, what you see in green, is actually the size, you know, which is uh, 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 the real size. If you compare it, one of these vertical things, what you have, is actually a sub micron, you know, kind of thing. And uh, this is a, a 3D print technology available at IIT Kharagpur. It's called Nanoscribe, you know. so whenever you want to do something very small you can contact them so you can see many times we think 3d printers have to be big to build big things no even a small 3d printer can be uh, used to make a big thing so like this you know what you have here is uh, a small printer in the foreground background what you have is a mammoth and that is built using the same printer how because we digitally cut it put them together and we are going to have this you know that's what we should you should also be doing you know building a robot uh, it can be a bigger than your printer you know it's quite possible and today the industry the future factories will look like this all clean and uh, you know they will have uh, no oil on the floor and they will have uh, uh, you know uh, no noise and they work 24 by 7 and they can be controlled even in the covid time uh, through a smartphone you know that kind of capability is coming in future and industry 4.0 is already up and running and uh, you can see the two things very important we need to state uh, when we talk of 3d printing there is no economy of scale you know economy of scale means if you make 100 making for one the cost of one piece will come down in the conventional manufacturing whereas in case of uh, uh, you know 3d printing uh, no matter whether you make 100 or you make uh, uh, 2000 the uh, the price will not come down you know that much as uh, you uh, find it in conventional manufacturing so we say there is no economy of scale but i will say in future nobody will actually require a 1 million part because uh, today's new generation gen x people uh, the i gen people or whatever you call millennials they want to enjoy their own uh, unique things you know they will design their own things this is called as democratization of design and uh, so they would like to uh, get it ordered made to order you know as per their specification that means it becomes a mass customization you know so there if you, even if you don't have economy of scale people are ready to pay more they are ready to wait for that okay very important and also one more uh, great virtue of 3d printer is uh, 3d printing technology is uh, complexity it can handle any kind of complexities you know that's very important moving forward we have this shows kind of uh, 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 the place of 3d printer today it can change uh, what you see here is when you want high volume you stick to conventional if you want highest complexity and few parts 
go to 3D printing. Okay. In fact, slowly it is changing. Uh, this is, uh, uh, but largely, you know, even today, uh, we have injection molding. Our CNC could be uh, um, useful to make more things. Uh, you also have investment casting and vacuum casting somewhere. But 3D printing is largely utilized to make prototypes, to make unique things, make one-off things, and uh, maybe a small batch. You know, that's where even today the power of 3D printing lies. So over the period of time, you know, it has, uh, the capabilities of 3D printing has changed. You know, it has become, you know, from mere mock-up model maker, or prototype maker to do design validation tool, and it can today make end user part. Well, yes, it can make a prototype which can be sold. That means this product has the capability to survive the hardship of the service in the use context, and it has its own life cycle, you know. And it can, after the life cycle, it can actually um, get retired also. So that means, you know, someone was asking, what is the life cycle? For a smartphone like this, for me, it was two years. For youngsters like you, it is just six months. Every six months, the technology changes for a smartphone. But maybe for a car, in the early days, a car was bought for a lifetime. You know, it was, it was uh, uh, kept for a lifetime, you know. Entire generation to generation, one car was being used. But today, a car life cycle is just uh, uh, five years, maybe three years, maybe two years, because there is a rapid change in design, the features, everything. I think with this, we come to the end of today's presentation. Uh, I'm trying to uh, build a solid foundation for tomorrow's uh, deep dive into technology. What are the capabilities? And we have tried to touch upon many things. Normally, I take this uh, uh, course to industry for two days, 18 hours course. But uh, zipping it down uh, as a boot camp, uh, it, uh, you know, um, it was uh, kind of a sprinting with the technology, I can, I can say. Imaginem has uh, various verticals. We have a rapid, which is characterized by the gear there. We have a precious, which is characterized by the ring there. We have a heart, which is uh, representing the life solutions. The 3D printer, what you have, academy we have, you know, and then you have a venture fund, uh, uh, Imaginem Ventures all this first the industry you know and uh, we are trying to contribute to shape the industry create value through innovations you can all uh, visit our website www.imagineam.io and you can also witness a kind of uh, we are ready walkthrough in the website you can actually see you know our uh, company uh, tomorrow i'll uh, try to show you I mean, what you see, I, I'm not having a digital background. It's a real background, what I have backside, you know. And it's a place to see. Whenever you're in Mumbai, you should all come and see. Our volunteers would be happy to take you around, show you um, what we do. And 3D printing in action is uh, uh, really seeing is believing, you know, they say. I think uh, with this, I would like to stop here and... Uh, push it back to our uh, uh, host. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, uh, Vinayal Patel, sir, for this wonderful opportunity. And uh, Ashish Thakur also, I'm able to see, um, who gave me the link today. I can see Vijay Pratap Singh also, and many others. And uh, uh, it's a great opportunity to uh, spend some time. I'm sure, you know, all your students, uh, will be able to create such innovations, you know, through this uh, robotic uh, society of India and uh, the maker place, what you have, uh, you shared your vision of uh, building a center of excellence. I think uh, there will be a lot of uh, opportunities for us to interact on this and uh, also uh, exchange information. 
also write papers and find internships. I only dream that many of your students, after uh, uh, getting such great inputs, will become our colleagues' future. You know, they will build the future of the industry. You know, that's very important. I think with this, I would like to uh, end here uh, for your closing comments. Uh, we'll again meet tomorrow, uh, probably with uh, less interaction, and uh, maybe your your other HODs are going to join. Maybe with uh, a, a small, uh, uh, you know, uh, introduction of them, we can start to spend a little bit more time tomorrow. I will take the questions tomorrow, and uh, I, I hope this was a, a, a engagement uh, which was uh, uh, useful to many students. And uh, we'll have more uh, uh, tricks, you know, uh, of this uh, wonderful technology tomorrow, because bootcamp is going to really bring those uh, desi, jo andar ka chupawa siddhanta tattwa, all those things will be brought out tomorrow, you know. So with this, I would like to uh, push it to. Uh, Professor Vinay Kumar, thank you. Uh, thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And uh, uh, really, I would like to thank uh, Mr. Sony that uh, he has uh, uh, advised us to ha have interaction with uh, you. Uh, really, uh, this session was uh, very much enjoy enjoyable, uh, technically enjoyable, and hopefully uh, tomorrow's session will also be the equivalent uh, technically enjoyable and uh, 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 sir uh, we 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 are looking for such association uh, as an institute uh, in uh, in our students uh, we we saw we saw that uh, there are uh, what you can say the uh, tremendous amount of uh, potential and with this association i think uh, the more potential will come out from this student uh, thank you thank you very much sir uh, my pleasure. Principal, sir, would you like to say something? Okay, Asis, uh, please end up this session. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, the students, see you tomorrow. Uh, will you please join at 2.50 so we can start the session at 3. Thank see you, you tomorrow. Have a good day. Goodbye. Thank you, Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.